just to to keep running on the wheel, buy the products. And that's why they keep hitting you with it. Okay, fine, that's the way it works. I, I, can't, I don't do that. I'm in another world. Talk radio is different than, than television. It's a different medium. And I believe that as this year emerges, I'm looking ahead, really. I'm kind of wrapping up the year, looking ahead, taking inventory, looking forward to what I'm putting into the store next year. You know, what objects do you want me to put in the store next year? I know what I'm going to put in the store next year. In other words, what merchandise am I going to display for you to buy? That's going to be all politics all the time. It's already become boring beyond belief to me. These these, these fake debates, it's uh, it's like the battleship Potemkin to me. It's nonsense. The stooge debates, especially the ones on the Democrat side, which don't exist. You know Bernie Sanders is a, a, a front for Hillary Clinton. They only pick the schmuck to make her look semi-centrist. They picked this moron street preacher, basically uh, like an ILGWU street communist from New York in the 1930s, someone you'd see out in Tompkins Square, screaming about the workers and the workers' revolution, the workers make the rich pay the fair share. I mean, I heard this crap in New York when I was a kid. We all laughed at them. Everyone had a crazy commie uncle like him. We all knew them what they were with the soiled shirts and the foul breath, you know, the poke you in the chest type with the finger, grab your collar, spritz you while they were talking. You had, to, you had to stand back from them when they talked. That's Bernie Sanders. And yet, you know, he may believe he's a real candidate. He's not a real candidate. The only competitor to, to Hillary Clinton was Jim Webb, and they ran him off, they ran him off the uh, stage because he was too patriotic. He sounded almost like a conservative. They got rid of him immediately. He was a true blue-collar Democrat. They got rid of him. So who is she? What does she stand for? Nothing. She stands for self-aggrandizement. She does not stand for women's rights. That's the most nonsensical thing I've ever heard in my life. Any woman who stood for women's rights would be screaming from a rooftop to send in the Marines to save the Yazidi girls from rape, murder, and torture. To send in anything they needed to send in, paratroopers, Green Berets, to kill the bastards and save the girls. That would be somebody who I believe for one second. So there'll be politics next year, as there is every year. And there'll be stuff like this, because I think the other things are just as important and interesting, like today, Tourette, medicine, you know. I think those are interesting subjects. So let's go to some of the callers. This is uh, by way of saying let's go to the callers on what will we look back upon 50 years from now and say, are you kidding? That's what they used in those days? Uh, Richard on WTMA Radio, what do you think will be uh, looked upon? Yeah, I'm not, not what's up. What will be looked upon with derision years from now? Oh, oh, yeah. I called in. I said uh, chemotherapy, man. So I'm saying, what do you mean? What do you mean? Chemo, you say chemotherapy will look that will be seen as primitive fifty years from now as as, as mistake? Yeah, but it saves people's lives. Uh, I mean. It saves it for a little bit, though. You know, the, the, the research I've done, like I said, I'm, I'm no doctor, no, you know what I'm saying, nothing no like that, just the research I've done on it. Yeah, but wait a minute, hold on. Let, let's not talk generically and stupidly. Chemotherapy has saved people's lives. How can we say chemotherapy will, will be looked upon as, 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 as faulty? How? Well, because, I mean, you're putting people through. I mean, it's not an easy process to get through, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, it, but I'm saying, but it saves people's lives, so what's the alternative? Well, I, like I said, you're saying 50 years. All right, thanks for the call. I know what he means. The young man means well. He means that chemotherapy is so general in its assault upon our cellular matrix that uh, it causes such harm to people as well. We know about that. But it's getting much more precise much more targeted to the actual cancer cells, and it's, evolu it's, an, evolutionary, uh, uh, it's an evolutionary procedure. I mean, sorry, evolutionary treatment. There's no such thing as chemotherapy the way it was. Chemotherapy from five years ago to today, huge differences. Huge differences. They target cells that are diseased rather than generically attacking all cells. So I don't know that you look upon all chemotherapy as uh, horrendous. And what is chemotherapy? It's using chemicals to destroy bad cells, right? Well, in that sense, you could say that almost any medicine is chemotherapeutic. All vitamins are chemotherapy. Do you want me to put it in that context for you? Vitamins are, ch are chemotherapy. If you're taking a vitamin, you're taking chemotherapy. I know it's not the same <laughs> concept because vitamins are not killing cells. 
vitamins are supporting health, which is different. I get that. But you can look upon food as a form of chemotherapy as well. Foods are, food is broken down into chemicals. And so there's good chemicals in foods and bad chemicals in foods and what kind of food. Well, that's, it's a whole story. Hundreds and hundreds of volumes need to be written on it. We have a caller who was a subject of Tourette's, Tourette at Yale, was a test subject. Rick uh, will be on the other minute we return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. We're not going to follow that suggestion that this particular candidate made. It would prevent the president of Afghanistan from coming to the United States. Uh, the king of Jordan couldn't come to the United States. Obviously, we're not going to do that. That's the gobbler, Mr. Cole, Mitch the Cole uh, McConnell, saying the Senate would not act on Trump's Muslim ban. Of course, making a, fall a fallacious, stupid argument. That's called reducto ad absurdum. When he says that the king of uh, Jordan couldn't come if there was a ban on Muslim immigrants. I mean, stupid. But we'd expect that from Mitch McConnell. He's... Uh, representative of the coal industry. They found a very good representative, and he's done their work. Just as John McCain is a good representative of the uh, arms industry, he's been very good for them recently. Not quite as good as he was 10 years ago, but the old war horse McCain can still get the job done when necessary of pushing the manufacture of weapons that no one needs and no one uses. It wouldn't be so bad if we used the weapons. But uh, when you, you see they're making the weapons for ISIS, it kind of, it kind of begs the question of why is our tax... Why are our tax dollars being used to make weapons which are being dropped to ISIS by, quote, accident or on purpose? So let's go to some of the callers. WABC, Rick, thanks. Go ahead, please. You're on the radio. Thank you, Dr. Savage. Um, yes, I've had uh, TS. We call it TS, Tourette syndrome. I also have comorbid OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, since about second grade. You're, you're all over it. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right in everything that you've said. It is a neurological disorder. It is hereditary. It's far more prevalent in, in men than in women. Um, it's, all, it's, it, it's the tick. The tick is what counts. A tick can be vocal or a tick can be like you see somebody blinking their eyes excessively or shrugging the shoulder, shrugging the neck, that sort of thing. You know, the visible mm. sort of ticks. Yeah. People, the so, people. Well, wait, wait, this is very intriguing. So, you know, it could be more subtle than people think then. Oh, my God. We, we're, ex, we're experts. We become experts at, at, at masking it. Like if I know that I'm always taking on my left side, I'll approach mm. you from the right side. A lot of times you don't even know I have Tourette's. Okay, it. let's look at the constellation of politicians out there without picking on any of them. Do any of them in your mind have such a syndrome? Oh, yes. Sheldon Silver. Shelly Silver. No one, know, no one knows who he is. He's the, he's the corrupt bum from New York State who just got indicted. But on a national scale, Rick, does Obama have uh, any of these ticks? I've never seen it with him. Um, I'm yeah, okay, so he, he's he's perfect a perfectly normal pathological liar. Good. Uh, who, so who would have it? I'm trying to think. Um, there are a number of famous. Right, so how do you control it when you feel it coming on? What do you do? A lot of times you can't. A lot of times you can't. Stress definitely makes it worse. All right, so what if a person engages in negative behavior that he knows is bad for him? Is that a Tourette? No. No, it's generally a tick. It can be a vocal tick. You know, it, a tick is an irresistible compulsion. You don't want to do this, but you do it. But, it, but it's not. All right, all right, wait. So picking at a sore. That can is be that, it. Wait, no, picking at a sore would be an OCD, right? Mostly, yeah, yeah, hand washing, checking a lock 16 times, you know, lock. <laughs> no, no, I know the checking the lock. That's a funny one. I'm, in this day and age, though, I don't think it's so much of a nutcase uh, than being a realist. I mean, I check my locks before I go to sleep. I load my weapons. What's wrong with That's a joke, sort of. So what else is considered? This is How do you know the difference between OCD and, and Tourette? That's what I want to know. I'll be back in a minute. Yesterday I talked about the rape and murder of little girls by ISIS. It went over everyone's head. No one, no one cared. I had the leader of an army trying to fight them in the Assyrian army. Not a word. Zero. Nothing. Not, not a word from the great champion of women. Hillary Clinton, champion of women. 
Not one word about the kidnap and rape of eight-year-old girls that's going on on an industrial scale in the Middle East. Not one word from that liar. She's a liar and a crook. How could you vote for her? How's that for Radio Tourette's? Not one word from the woman who says she is a champion for women. Not one word about ongoing kidnap, slavery, and rape of little girls. Yazidis in this case. I guess they don't count because it's a funny name, you know. After what's a Yazidi? How many Yazidis could vote for her in America? Really, how many Yazidis do you know? They can't vote for her. And we know she's a woman of pure and absolute conscience. And all you women who would vote for her, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you have any shame, you ought to be ashamed of yourself lining yourself up with someone like her. Oh, I don't care that she's a Democrat. That doesn't bother me at all. There used to be Democrats who loved America. Oh, there really used to be Democrats who were nationalists, who were in favor of protecting the people of this country, who didn't sell themselves out to foreign entities. Yeah, there used to be Democrats like that, if you can believe it. They weren't even all communists. I remember them. We had the, one of them in this campaign, and they, they destroyed him, former Secretary of the Navy, Jim Webb, great man, and they destroyed him. They made a mockery of his nationalism. That's what your Democrat Party has become. Nothing. Zero. Worthless. Here's another one for you if you don't have enough. Are you ready for this one? Those of you who don't know what Sharia law is and what Muslims really want to do to you in this country once they gain a certain foothold... Those of you who are stupid enough to think that the Muslims are just like other oppressed minorities who came here, you morons, you, you idiots, you psychos who don't know anything about history. Are you ready for this? The filthy, tiny, oil-rich Asian nation of Brunei has banned all public Christmas celebrations from tree lighting to the donning of Santa hats and threatened offenders with up to five years in prison, the Sydney Morning Herald reports. Now, what you may may not know is that the country is 32% Christian. Non-Muslims are 32% of the population. But the Muslim fascists who run the tiny, oil-rich Asian nation of Brunei have banned all public Christmas celebrations. The ban was first enacted last year to control the act of celebrating Christmas, which could damage the beliefs of the Muslim community. The Ministry of Fascist Religious Affairs said in a statement published in the Brunei Times. It gets even better for all of you Muslim lovers out there. According to the statement, Christmas celebrations violate the penal code, prohibiting the propagation of religions other than Islam to Muslims. It's such a fabulous religion, Islam, that they're afraid that if the children and the people, as a matter of fact, who are Muslim see Christians expressing kindness to each other, it may kind of spread to their religion and undermine it. Some may think that it is a frivolous matter and should not be brought up as an issue. A group of local imams told the Borneo Bulletin, the Australian newspaper reports, quote, but we must keep it away as it could affect our Islam Islamic faith. How do you like that? The announcement was met by boycotts and protests at Sultan Hassani, Bulkia's hotels in the U.S. and U.K. Interesting. What hotels does the Sultan of Brunei own here in the U.S.? Hotels owned by the Sultan of Brunei. Aha, U.K., he owns the Dorchester. Never go there. Uh, in the U.S., the Beverly Hills Hotel. I'm never going there again. I'm not going there again. I, could say, I know it was boycotted because of a gay thing. Now I'm never going there again. I'm going to be in Beverly Hills this week, and I'm not going there. I go there for coffee. It's like I went there for two coffees, and a, a piece of cake. It cost forty dollars. It was beautiful though, because nobody was in the in the in the polo lounge. I like going there when none of the posers are there. It's a pleasure to go into restaurants in Beverly Hills with all the fakers or not. They will make believe they have deals pending. They got a deal pending. It's almost coming. It's almost about to be completed. It's in progress. They're looking at it, say, evaluating it. There's no one there. It was gorgeous. I'm never going there again. The Hotel Bel Air, Los Angeles, opened again in Chouin, never going there. In France, Le Maurice, Paris, La Plaza Athene, in Switzerland, if you're thinking of going there for the holidays of all of my rich listeners, uh, Le Richemont, or for those of you who are popping off to Italy for the holidays because you have nothing but money in your pockets, uh, he owns the Hotel Principe de Savoia in Milan and the Hotel Eden in Rome. 
you know, if Christians really want to support Christmas, they ought to consider who the Sultan of